We finished our question model, and now we can go back to our Game View controller. We can uncomment this line. We shouldn't get an error. And we can write code to retrieve uh, our JSON data. So let's go ahead and do that right here. And we're going to override our view did appear function. So we're going to initialize the superclass view did appear. Well, the first thing we're going to do while it's loading the data is we're going to have our activity indicator start spinning. Whoops, start animating. Now we'll actually make the call to get our data. Uh, and we, because I have a, I will use our question model. I will do get objects with completion. So this means get all the objects of type question. Oops, hold on. Stop. So notice the only parameter is a completion block. So I'm going to write a completion block for this. So I'll use, and I want it to return some questions. And the questions are going to be of type any object. That's how they're going to come back from Basebox. We're going to see if there's any errors of type ns error. And then, oops, got this backwards. I'll write my uh, completion handler. So once the objects are retrieved, activity indicator, I'm going to have it stop spinning or stop animating. And then we'll check the error. If the error equals nil, so there's there's no error. I can say let my question array, remember I created this questions property here, so let that questions array equal the questions that were returned from Basebox. And I'll do it as an array of type question. So if there's no error, set these questions equal to or assign the value of these questions to this property as an array of type question. And then we're going to create a method called play. So if this works, run a method type play, which we haven't written yet. Otherwise, if there is an error, we're just going to print something to the console for right now. Error loading questions. And we'll hope we don't get that. And we'll close our closure. And now the only error we get is, well, it doesn't know what this play method is. But that's OK. So let's go ahead and write the play method. Whoops. Not what I wanted to do. Let's do it here. Actually, I'll do it down a little bit. OK. So when I start the actual game. So the questions get loaded, the play method's called, this is what is going to make our game work. We're going to let our buttons equal our array of buttons again. Actually, let me just copy that here. I probably could have typed it as fast. Oh well. We are going to first check to see if there's any questions left. So if questions.count equals zero. So the way that our game is going to work is after it asks a question, it's going to remove it from the array. If the array is empty, our game must be done. We've done all the questions. So if the questions count equals zero, dismiss view controller 
and let's go back to our home view controller. So if we've done all the questions, let's end the game and we'll return control of this function. Okay, if not, we're going to let question, the current question, equal questions zero. So the first question in the array as something type question. We'll let the question text, okay, so question text, whoa, whoa, whoa. So question text dot text equal question dot question. So remember, this is the text, our, our text view, right, our text block. We're going to set the text to that equal to the question. Then we'll say question text dot hidden equals false. Go ahead and show the question. Stop. All right, let's do a variable i equals zero. It's just going to be a counter. Let's set up our buttons for button in buttons, our button array. We'll do button set title and we'll do question dot answers i for state dot normal. So right now i is zero and so it's going to go through the buttons in the array. It'll set the title of each button to whichever its corresponding answer is in the array. So if the answer was 1959, that was the first one, it says the first button equal to that title. Second button to the second answer, third button to the third answer, and so on. And then we're going to do button dot hidden equals false. So we're going to show the buttons again. And then we'll add one to the counter. Okay. So at the end of this, it will have gone through all the buttons, set the title for each button equal to the answer, each answer in the array, and then show all the buttons. Now, last thing we need to do is we're going to set the timer value equal to 10. And then we're going to start our NS timer. So the timer we set equals NS timer dot scheduled timer with time interval. It's going to be one second. Oops, I did an invocation. I want that one, the selector. So 1.0, the target will be self, the selector will be update, and again, we have not written that method yet. User info will be nil, and repeats will be true. And there's my timer. So now we have one last thing to write, which is our update function. And hopefully that should be the last thing. So let's go ahead and write that. So we'll first of all, we'll check to see if our timer, uh, if our time is expired. So if timer value equals zero, stop. So if our timer value is zero, we need to remove the, the current question. So from our array of questions, remove, remove it index zero, remove the first question. We're going to invalidate the timer, and then we'll run the play method again, which means check to see if there's any questions, and so on and so on and so on. Otherwise, if the timer value is not zero, so else timer value, subtract one, so minus minus, and we'll let the timer label dot text equal the 
the timer, the string value of the timer. Okay, so if it, if it, the time runs out, remove the question, invalidate the timer, play the game. Otherwise, subtract one from the timer and set the label to whatever that current value is. That's a pretty straightforward method. So I guess we weren't quite done. We have one last thing to do. We have to check to see if the user uh, has chosen the correct answer. And we'll finally get that done next.